The guys at Pawn Stars don't always get the best deals. As a matter of fact, a lot of the times they end up getting ripped off, especially when Chun-Li breaks something. So in today's video, we're going to look at some times when the Pawn Stars got ripped off. Diamonds are a pawn shop's worst enemy. In a History Channel segment in 2010, Rick Harrison discussed the time he was cheated by a girl's best friend. A man in a sharp suit was looking to pawn a pair of diamond earrings. Harrison asked all the right questions, the seller gave all the right answers, and even had a receipt. Harrison forked over $40,000. Three days later, the police showed up. The jewelry was stolen, the victim got her diamonds back, and the criminal paid the price. But Harrison was out his $40,000. That was the biggest bust I ever had in the pawn shop, he said. Cubic zirconias, also bad. The late great Richard the Old Man Harrison said that fake diamonds have swindled him the most. When Kubrick Zirconia, a synthetic diamond doppelganger, first hit the market in the late 70s and early 80s, many a pawn shop was duped. Nobody knew about them, and they tested as diamonds, said Harrison in a History Channel segment in 2010. Everybody in the industry had bought a bunch of them. He said he wasted nearly $30,000. Cubic zirconias don't pose much of a problem for today's pawn trade, the old man's grandson Corey Big Hoss Harrison even filmed the DIY video for the History Channel in 2009 called How to Spot a Fake Diamond. In short, the Fox Rocks are too perfect, Corey said. There are very, very few perfect diamonds out there, so the hawker on the street probably doesn't own one. To be sure, he recommends examining gems under a magnifying glass or asking a reputable jeweler to take a closer look. The Jimi Hendrix Experience a lot of customers stroll into the pawn shop toting guitars, but when a long-haired seller claimed to own one of Jimi Hendrix's electrics, Rick Harrison got all fanboy behind the counter. If this was actually owned and played by the legend himself, this would be the coolest guitar to ever walk into my shop, he said in a 2014 episode. Harrison brought in a local expert, Jesse Amoroso, of Cowtown Guitars to examine the item. Amoroso confirmed that 63 Olympic white Fender Stratocaster was, in fact, played by Hendrix. It had the telltale scuff marks of the rough riffing left-hander as well as historic photos, documents, and a serial number. Amoroso estimated it was worth a million dollars at auction. Harrison put up $450,000, the seller wanted $750,000. As he turned to leave, Harrison jumped up to $600,000, but those boots kept walking. This teaching moment was brought to you by Rolex. Though Corey Harrison grew up in the pawn shop, he had to learn some of the business lessons the hard way. When I first started working the night shift, I didn't have that much experience here, and being the typical 18-year-old kid, I thought I knew everything. The Big Haas said in a 2010 segment on the History Channel, It must have gotten around town pretty quick because I bought six fake Rolexes in one week. His foolhardy ways cost him $4,000 and really ticked off his family. Viewers have learned there are thousands of tricks sellers use on fake timepieces. Corey's dad, Rick Harrison, shared some time-tested tips in a 2009 segment. But his bottom line was, if you're going to buy a Rolex off somebody, don't buy it off the internet. Don't buy it off Craigslist. Come to a guy like me if you want to use one or go buy a new one. Don't buy it off the street. The Shoeless Joe Jackson Autograph In the season 6 episode Say It Ain't So, Rick made another ill-fated gamble without consulting his trustworthy experts, shelling out $13,000 on a book he believed might contain the authentic signature of baseball great Shoeless Joe Jackson. Rick couldn't have been more excited during the appraisal, saying this is absolutely incredible and speculating that it might be the rarest sports signature, period, because Jackson was illiterate. But despite the seller's questionable certificate of authenticity and Rick's own reservations, as he admitted, of all the sports signatures in the world, this is one of the most fake. He bought it anyways. 13 grand is a lot of money, but a once in a lifetime piece like this, I think it's definitely worth the gamble. After hearing from Rebecca, his book expert, the signature was likely a fake, Rick then sent it out to another authenticator who reiterated the bad news. But not only was it forgery, it was a laughably bad one. This brings us to the end of our video, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of our videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.